If you're not familiar with Airtable, let me welcome you to the Bases page. This is where all of your workspaces and Airtable bases live. The best way to think about it is that a workspace is like a folder or a way to organize all of your bases. And bases, which are short for databases, are like spreadsheets. So you can organize this by work and personal or different projects that you have going on in your business. Whatever works best for you. Today, I'm going to go over how to manage clients with Airtable. I have a sample base that you can copy, but I want to show you how you might create something from scratch first. All over the Bases tab, you have the ability to add a base in any workspace. The good news is if you make it in the wrong workspace, you can easily move them between different areas. Simply click the Add a Base button, and you can start with a template, which are templates that Airtable has for you, import a spreadsheet if you're using Numbers or Excel, or start from scratch, which is what I typically recommend. Once you click Start from Scratch, you'll be able to name your base, pick a color, and set an icon. But again, I already have an example set up, so let's head over there. When you're setting up a new base in Airtable, it's best to set up the fields that you think you're going to need across the board. Think of these as the columns in the spreadsheet. You can always add more fields as you go, but it helps to see the data laid out when you have some of those elements already in place. You can add fields by clicking this plus sign on the far right. You can give the field any name that you want as long as it hasn't been taken, and you can select what type of field it is using all of the available options. The ones at the top are a little bit more straightforward, and as you get down to the bottom, you can set things like formula, roll up, look up, which are a little bit more complicated and stuff we'll go into in other videos. If there's a column that you don't want, click the down arrow next to it, and hit delete fields and that will clear it up. Be warned that Airtable doesn't give you the option to confirm that you wanna delete it, but if you hit Command Z on Mac or Control Z on PC, it will come back. Let's go over all of the fields or columns that I have set up for managing clients. We're gonna bypass this first one and talk about all the others first. Because of how I organize client data, I like to have a first name field and a last name field. These are both single line text fields, pretty straightforward. If you want to, you can add default text, but since this is a name field, that doesn't really make sense for this. Just like those, I have a business name field in case a customer or client of mine operates under a business name or whether they operate under their personal name. Next to that, I have their email, which is an email field. So it will be formatted just like an email, which is nice. After that, I have phone number and URL, which are also formatted to be those specific types of information, phone number and a website link. Then I list services, status, PM system, and folder. All of these fields are single select. So think about this like a drop down menu. Each entry can only have one selected, but note that Airtable does give you the option to have a multiple select field. And from here, you can enter in the options that you want, and you can even color code them, or you can turn that off if you find it distracting. You can add your options to start or you can add them as you build up your client base. So for services, I'm pretending that this is a copywriter's Airtable, and so I have ghostwriting, copy editing, web copy, and sales emails. For status, it's the status of the client, so where they are in the pipeline. Waitlist, active, complete, or the infamous MIA for those clients that seem to stop emailing you. For PM system, I have listed the different uh, project management systems that my clients like to use. Asana, Basecamp, Trello, Google Drive. Again, you can add other options with a simple return. If you don't want an option, click the X next to it. 
And if you want to rearrange them, you click and drag. And then finally, I have the folder color because that's something that I like to monitor. One field that I jumped over was agreement, which is an attachment field. And so that way I can upload my client agreements right here in my CRM. Let's go back to the client field, which is a formula. So this is pretty gnarly, but that's okay. We're gonna break it down. So I'm gonna copy this formula and I'm actually gonna bring it over into a text document so that you can see it. So what I have here is I have if statements. If the business name is blank, then you're gonna populate this, first name plus last name. Otherwise, you're gonna populate the business name with the first name and last name in parentheses. So that's just how I handle noting my client's official name. I have some example data that I wanna populate right into this Airtable. I copied and pasted, and it gives me the option to expand or don't expand, but I want to expand it. And then it's gonna fill it in. So here you can see Brutus Callahan and his business name, Bull Mastiff Security, populates over in this client field as Bull Massive Security, parentheses, Brutus Callahan. Pixel Chopsticks, who doesn't have a business name, populates as Pixel Chopsticks. From here, it might look not much different than Google Sheets or Excel. But where the real magic happens is when you can start to use views in Airtable. Whenever I make a base in Airtable, I always leave a view that looks just like this, where I can see all of my information laid out just like an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheets. But then I start to customize it by creating views that really break the information down into useful and very visual layouts. The nice thing about Airtable is that they have a bunch of different views that you can use. So let's head over to this view that I've created called client progress. So what happened is I created a new view and I decided to order it by the status. What that does is it groups clients by waitlist, active, complete, or MIA. And then I can move them through the process by clicking and dragging. And Airtable will automatically update their status from waitlist to active, to complete, hopefully never MIA, but shit happens. Then I have it sorted by services so that when I'm looking at my active clients, I know how many ghostwriting clients I have versus copy editing clients. If this feels like too many ghostwriting clients, then I know that I need to complete one of them or any new ghostwriting requests must be waitlisted. You can view as much or as little information on these cards as you want. So if you wanted to view emails and URLs and the PM system that you use, you simply check all of those items and there they go. But if we hop over to client waitlist, that's a better use of the filter view. So in this view, I'm using one filter and it's that status is waitlist. So Airtable is showing me only my waitlisted clients so that I can see them laid out. I can see how many clients that I have and the necessary information. The other thing to note is I've hidden fields in this view. Specifically, I've hidden the first name, last name, and business name because the client field has all of that information for me. And then I've also hidden the status and the agreement because this is filtering in waitlist clients only. I don't need to know the status. They are a waitlist client. And the agreement, if I toggle that to show you, let's drop a file right in there. The agreement is just this tiny, tiny little thumbnail that doesn't really help us. So I tend to hide that because I'm not gonna get much data out of that in this view. 
but let's say I did want to get more information. I'm going to click these arrows to expand the record for pixel chopsticks. And then from here, I can expand the hidden fields. If I added a name, here's the agreement. I can click on it to view it a little bit larger. I can download it. I can trash it, whatever I need to do. I can use these arrows to go through the folks in this view, or I can close it out and then click on another one. So instead of the same sort of view for current clients, where it is filtering them by active, so only active clients are being shown, and then I use the group by field to group them by services, again, so that I can see who I have in ghostwriting and who I have in copy editing. If I pop over to my client progress, and let's say I move pixel chopsticks from the waitlist to the active column. So now when I go to my current clients list, I see that sales emails has a client listed in there. And then the other thing you can do within each view is you can rearrange elements and it won't change that order in your other views. So from here, it goes email, phone number, URL. But if I pop over to current clients, it's phone number, URL, email. So if there are folks on your team that like viewing things in a specific way, you can create a view for them. Let's say I wanted to create a new current client list for a member of my team. So I'm going to say current client, and this is for Brutus. I'm going to click these three dots and I'm going to click copy another views configuration. So I want this to be very similar to the current clients list. I'm going to copy the field visibility, the field order, the filters, the groups, and the sorts. So now I have a pretty exact clone of the current client view. But let's say that Brutus doesn't like looking at the folder color because he's colorblind and he doesn't pay attention to that. Let's say Brutus handles customer service. So he's really just focused on being able to contact these clients by calling them on the phone or by emailing them. He likes viewing the agreements just to see if their agreements are in place in Airtable or not. So this view might be exactly how Brutus wants to view things. Or let's say he wants to add a sort. He wants to sort by the last name because he's old school like that. So he can decide to sort from A to Z or Z to A. And he can choose to sort once and leave it or to keep them sorted as new information is added. You can add fields in different views. So let's say Brutus wanted to add a field of May email that's a checkbox so that he knows he emailed these clients to check in. So he checked in with Velcro Doggo, he checked in with Pixel Chopsticks, and he's checked in with Wally Nugget. So now he has that information. If you pop over to my view of current clients, that field is automatically hidden because it wasn't created in this view. So if you want to use this sample Airtable, I have a link below that you can click and you can copy over. You can change any or all of these columns. Remember, Airtable notes them as fields and start utilizing this to keep track of your client. We're going to add some tabs for tracking tasks and projects and other information related to clients. But for now, start filling out your clients, your services, possibly statuses of the process, and any sort of information that's specific to how you work with your clients.